understand Only she can, only she hands It's only Only It's only she hands Hey guys, welcome back to another solo episode of Only Fiends. Three solos in a row. Well, it's not our fault. I mean, the truth is most of you guys just want to hear from me and pretend that you're my boyfriend anyway. From what I've discovered and sharing my last clip is that there was, there was, because they're gone now. I don't know where they are, but there was a small faction of people who got really mad at the story that I shared about a experience I had with a man. And I was just honest about it. And I mean, I've never got so like so many unfollow, so many announcements of the unfollow, so many comments. And you know what Instagram did to me this morning? They were like, Hey, this comment got a lot of traction on your post. Do you want to put it as a highlight in your story? And I go, oh, it must be a nice comment. Let me check out. Let me see what it is. And I go, and it's this guy who said, this ruined her for me. My life ruined me for him. What can I do now after having been ruined for him? He was like, that's just sort of like a shitty way to treat people and this and that. Is it a shitty way to treat people? Because, sorry, if you missed the last episode, you got to just watch it. And then you'll know what I'm talking about because I'm not going to rehash the whole thing. But saying that I treated someone shitty by allowing them to take shelter in my beautiful one-bedroom apartment in Battery Park is kind of fucking wild. How is that treating someone shitty? Asking a grown man to pay for 50%, not all of, that's what the Venmo requests were in reference to, 50% of, you know, like food and transportation. That's treat, what a shitty outlook on life, a shitty outlook on life. What the fuck are you talking about? I think it's a pretty great outlook on life. Hey, Let's check out this cop from Denver. Let's give him a shot. Why not? Equal opportunity freaking lady over here. Not my fault he blew it. It's not my fault he fucking blew it. I've blown it with people. And it's not even that like it's good or bad. I'm just like the chemistry wasn't there. And let me make something very clear. He could have had zero dollars, less than zero dollars. I could have been giving him an allowance. And if our sexual chemistry was like off the charts and his personality was fucking crazy good and I'm laughing and I'm learning nonstop, I wouldn't have said shit. So I think some people are forgetting that that the chemistry and the intensity and like love that starts blossoming that trumps every single nickel and dime. The only time you sort of like start nickel and diming and pointing things out is when you really don't fucking like the person. And I'm not allowed to not like people. This is all the co- I'm out. How dare she? I'm out. First of all, just for fucking a cop. We can't. Uh, th- nobody believes in fucking law and order anymore. I mean, what the hell? These people are sworn to protect and serve us. And I can't throw them a Hummer once in a while. I mean, geez. You guys are so politicized and it's the men. It's you guys. It's you fragile little freaking weirdos. Why on earth would someone else's relationship bother you? Why would it have any effect on you? So much that your little fingers are magnet, like with a magnetic force to your keyboard. <laughs> or maybe it's just your little thumbs. Oh, I'm going to get her. Oh, I'm going to get her. Reason number 156 why you're single. <laughs> First of all, what's one through 155 is what I want to know, because this guy's been keeping score. Reason 157, why you don't have a man. What do you mean? I did have a man. He was right here. I sent him back. I returned him. You guys act like any, any, the lowest hanging thing. I should just be like, oh, finally, I got, I got a fucking, this guy has a pulse. Let him move in. What's the matter with some of you? This is why a lot of you guys are actually single, though, is because you care about other what other people do in their private lives. This is entertainment. Also, we zhuzh it up for the pod. I hate to break the fourth wall for you fucking intellectuals. 
We judge. Anyway, I just got back from Key West. I'm in a great mood. Fucking love Key West. Shout out to uh, Joe List, who was the initial catalyst who like recommended me really hard and um, brought me and Tom Dustin together on a podcast so we could kind of mash and hang. So first and foremost, I'd like to thank the one and only Joe List, who I will be going to Austin with on Thursday when this comes out Friday. I'm in Austin. I've already been there for a day um, doing spots at the Mothership Thursday, Friday and Saturday featuring for Joe and maybe a couple uh, in the upstairs little boy, too, on um, Thursday and Saturday. And I fucking love Austin. Can't wait to hang out. Hopefully it's like a little warm. I think I saw like 69, but like no sunshine. Like what's up with that? Hey, us. What is up with that, Tejas? Um, and, you know, maybe I'll bebop around, pop it in the creek, pop into the Vulcan, uh, you know, sunset. We'll see what's going on, Austin. I'm excited to be there. Uh, I did get stuck in Key West for an extra 27 hours. So this is my, oh, man, Jim Norton would have been pissed. He loves my flight stories. This one's for Jimmy. <laughs> All right, so my flight's at three. The Key West Airport is similar to like what I know, like um, airports like Hyannis Airport, Nantucket Airport, Island Airports. They're small. It's like the security line's wicked short. You're in and out. And they're, it's basically like two rooms, you know, and the gates is just outside parking lots for the planes. So plane parking lots, also known as parking lots. And so... <laughs> You go and they board the entire plane. We're all boarded. We're fastened. We're sitting there. And then here he comes, my guy, Captain. And I know, I always know. I fly enough. I just get the feeling. I just get the feeling when something's like a little off. He gets on the thing. He goes, the emergency, the emergency, the emergency door is not working right now, you guys. And uh, we're going to have to find a solve for that problem. Uh, if that doesn't work, I'm going to be honest with you. That is a no go item. <laughs> That's what he said. I really liked how he put that. Not having a working emergency door uh, is technically speaking a no go item. <laughs> and I like that because I don't want to be up in the sky without an emergency door. I think that's what we got to slide out to, you know, land in the ocean with our parachutes and stuff. So I personally wanted a working emergency door. He goes, we're going to try to find one from another plane in this airport, which that sounds like a really smart idea to me. Five minutes later, we couldn't find another one. <laughs> we could not find another door. So what we're going to do is drive one up from Miami. And that's about a four hour drive. And right then I got on my phone and started booking a flight for the next day and a hotel for that night. Um, because I'm just... I'm not spending time. If I'm on Key West, right? If I'm in Key West, on Key West, sound off in the comments. Correct me there. Please. I need it. Um, I'm not staying in a fucking airport. Everyone stayed. Every single person stayed. Everybody's hopping on their phones, like pick up my kids from here. I got to rearrange this. We're not going to make dinner. We're not going to make that meeting. <laughs> panic, panic. Cortisol, cortisol, cortisol. Not me. I was out back outside in the sunshine within 30 minutes on my way to my new hotel, have my flight booked. Delta refunded me today. Today I got my refund. Thank you, Delta. And an extra 7,500 miles for the inconvenience. Mwah. I love you, Delta. Listen, money fixes everything. I'm very sorry that's, that's the truth, but it fucking is. If this had happened to me, a situation like this had happened to me when I was like, on a budget and like you plan for this and you only have this for this and like a monkey wrench gets thrown in and you're like, fuck, I can't like, you know, I'm stuck. I just, I have to suffer. I remember those days and they sucked. And I'm very, very grateful that I can now just be like, here, fix, guh, bye, I'm out. I couldn't imagine just waiting for four hours. And I knew it was going to take longer from four hours. It's a four hour drive. For, they haven't even started the drive yet, right? While the guy's on the phone, they got to get the thing, put it on the thing, make it there, get the thing to the plane, then come with the mechanical guys and put the thing on the plane. That's got to take a while. And I was correct. I kept getting notifications for that flight. Delayed another hour, delayed another hour. I didn't leave till like 10, I think. Did I make the right call? I don't know. I don't know. Did I inconvenience Nicole a little bit? Probably. <laughs> 
What, Nicole, did I fuck up your life? Not really. Sometimes I'm like falling apart during the day <laughs> and I get ready only for this. <laughs> so I'm like trying to do work all day and I'm like, bah, like I have to be somewhere later tonight. I should just like hold off. <laughs> so sometimes it's a blessing. Okay. Plus when it's just us, then we get to hang. Yeah, we get to hang. It's man. very chill. We I don't have to like shit. put on, you know, any type of performance for anybody. No. Nope. We just nope. vibe. We'll just make another viral clip, piss off these fucking, of these bots. I, I, I still don't understand the people that we pissed off. And then there are men who I know in my life that are like friends and they're trying to explain to me and like rationalize like why they're like, they're going to get on you because of the money stuff. And I'm like, what do you mean? Get on me because of the money stuff. Like, is this a new thing that like, women aren't attracted to poppers is that a new theory i mean i don't think i was being that harsh but i i don't know that but it's like the same shit of men commenting on videos of women being like take her swimming on the first date or whatever or like just like shitting on us for wearing makeup or whatever you know what right. i mean and, but like when you're like they have to have a little bit of money so i don't have to buy them an uber yeah. or a quesadilla at the diner I, I, then I it's a everyone, problem yeah but I, I want everyone to have a little money i want my friends to have a little money i want everybody to have a little money you know like so we can all go in on things i talk shit about the cheap chick at the group dinner you know, that's an archetype. <laughs> I I guess because even when I was broke, um, I I don't think I was, but like I, I was never really like inconveniencing or putting other people out or making people feel uncomfortable. It was like if I couldn't afford to be at an experience, I wouldn't go to that experience because it you know how it feels to be like. And listen, when you're fucking a 21 year old, 22, basically all your 20s and like your friends are like, we're going out. You're not spending money. You're just not like you're just getting bought drinks. That's how it went. But like the older you get and you have jobs and, you know, you start chilling out and like life is in bottle service every fucking weekend. It's like, yeah, have a little fucking kashish. What's the big deal? Do you think part of it is there's an assumption that you're going to pay for everything? Yeah, I mean, that's a shitty... <gasps> Please get that spaz. Like, I really hope you got that whole thing on camera. It also felt like there's just a drawer open for some reason. For that. And it poured... Direct Never happened. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the first spot I didn't get rip wearing high before. So I don't know why we're... Yeah, the assumption that I'm going to pay for... Listen... There are certain men in my life who I do like treat a lot because I know their economic situations and maybe they have kids and maybe they've, you know, had a tough month or they're coming up and life in New York and being a struggling comic can be expensive. So, but those guys are the most grateful and are also the first ones to like offer me rides home or like help out in other ways. So there's not a ton of, of that. But yeah, when it comes to like a romantic situation, your girl still believes in traditional gender roles. Like just because I got it, it, it depends on the situation, you know? But like if you're trying to date me, I think in the beginning, yeah, like because I do appreciate it because I know how much things cost. So when a guy takes me out to dinner, I'm, I'm thanking you all night. You guys know what I mean. Anyway, back to Key West. Nicole, have you ever been to Key West? No, I haven't. I think you'd like it. I was born in Florida. Oh, I never went to Key West. Interesting. That's crazy. That's like being born in Massachusetts and like never going to like Martha's Vineyard or like Nantucket kind of, isn't yeah. it? I'm, well, I was six months old, so I didn't really okay, have like never. free will at that point. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't just toss you over to Key West just to show you the roosters. First of all, Mabel and I could never live in Key West because Mabel would eat all the roosters. They're just everywhere. They're, they're like the pigeons of Key West. And they're, they're all on different alarm clocks. So there are a lot of like 5.30 a.m. roosters. And I would wake up with those guys because that's when like I kind of wake up anyway. And they're like, ah! like they're, and I guess they're horny. That's why they're doing that. Um, shout out to the other, uh, the co-owner of Comedy 
Key West Joe for telling me that that's what they're yelling. They're horny. Uh, and, and then there's like a whole other round of them at 7 a.m. that like slept in past the 530s. And I'm like, listen, you can't. This, that's like hitting snooze on the animal alarm clock. I didn't like that. I felt like they should all kind of, first of all, I think the 530s should move up to 6 and, and the 7s should, you know, everyone should meet at 6. Yeah, the roosters rape the chickens all the time. Who was telling me that? One of the other comics. Shout out to the, the comics that were at uh, Comedy Key West this week. Tom Dustin um, hosted every night. He's so fucking funny. Such a great storyteller. An amazing host. Just uh, cannot say enough about that club or any of those guys. I had such an amazing time. Um, James, what's his fucking last name, also did spots on the show. Super funny. Um, yeah, and Steve. And then, oh, and shout out to Kristen, who is Tom's girlfriend, who was the best and got us reservations at this restaurant called Blue Heaven that you could not get into. There was a lines out the door. Um, <clears throat> I had a yellowtail snapper that blew my mind. It was so fucking good. I could only eat half of it at the restaurant because I had to run to the show, but then I had it later heated up and it was banging. So good. Um, my mother... So when I first booked this gig, I was like seeing maybe my sister wanted to come and I think she had to work. And I was like, maybe my mom, my mom's like, I'll go, I'll go. And I'll see if my friend Masha will come. Ooh, that's my friend Masha. So my mother, I'll send you some like videos of them, Nicole, to put in. But these two had a fucking blast. They ditched me, I think, three or four times. They ditched me immediately when we got there. I was like, oh, I'll go with you on an adventure. Just let me like get a little sun. Let me lie by the pool for a minute. I look up, they're gone. They're like on a trolley tour. They went, you can go to the Hemingway house and take a tour. They did all the tourist stuff and I just got left behind. I just kind of chilled by the pool. There was like a butterfly um, exhibit and Judy Bloom, the author, owns a bookstore there with her husband. We were hoping to try and see Judy Bloom, but we did not. Yeah, they did everything. They went on the tour. They saw the southernmost tip which Tom Dustin told me is actually not the southernmost tip. The southernmost tip is behind a military base or something. But yeah, Key West is great. There's drag shows. Um, a lot of people before I went were like, oh, it's a big drinking town, this and that. And it is, but it's not like an aggressive drinking town. It's like a laid back, really cheery vibes. Everybody very positive, full of vitamin D and sunshine every day. It's not like... Uh, I don't know. I didn't notice any like really hardcore partying. Everything felt very safe. I felt safe walking everywhere I went. Yeah. I mean, just like we had like a long stretch. It's sunny out today. Thank God. But of like no sun here in New York. And I think that's why we're all getting wicked depressed. So it was nice to go somewhere. It was, where it was sunny. My mom requested songs from the guys playing uh, music at the pool. She requested forever in blue jeans. She was jamming out. Forever in blue jeans. Oh, and then we went to a place called Little Pearl. And it was like a chef's tasting menu. Oh, my friggin' God. Short ribs, tuna, more snapper, ceviche. Like, they had these, like, little ice cream cones that were, like, upside down ice cream cones with sesame. I don't know. It was so fucking good. Yeah, that's it. All these tiny little delicious course. I think it was, like, four courses. Sam Rubinoff actually was the first one to tell me about this place. Shout out to Sam Rubinoff. I have a table reading with him today at 4 p.m. for a short film working on with Joe List. So look out for that. Congrats to Jane, uh, Shane, uh, Jane, Shane Gillis hosting SNL. <laughs> I just think it's so funny. I find this interesty, industry very funny. Like how they just like came crawling back. Because, I mean, it's corny and everybody's saying it, but you kind of just, you can't deny how funny he is. Sorry. I don't know. Sometimes, like, people on SNL give me, like, the cringe. They give me pretty hardcore cringe vibes. But I know that Shane's episode's going to be hilarious. What are they going to do? I think that's just going to be, like, every sketch with him and Bowen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. That's exciting. Do you have any thoughts about that, Nicole? 
I was like definitely surprised to see it. I think I saw him post it first and I was like, oh, is this a meme? Like I thought that someone edited it and then mm. I saw every single person posting it. I'm like, there's no way. Yeah. It, I don't know. It's like he obviously deserves it. But mm-hmm. to me, it's like it. it's just like this is so phony. This is all yeah. so phony. And then I also was like seeing everyone post it. I'm like, what does everyone else think? Because to me, it's kind of like. This is a it's a bizarre move, but obviously he he's hilarious and deserves it. I think if for us, it feels like a win because it was such a an attempt at canceling by that Seth Simons guy who like we all just fucking hate, like from like the shit he used to pull with Legion of Skanks and all like those people like he just couldn't wait to get people canceled. What did he do? I don't know if I know. I remember he's him the one who like this, but. Dug through the archives of Shane's podcast to find that clip of him right. sounding racist. What about skanks, though? You said he used to do stuff to them. Yeah, he would like, you know, say they're racist and misogynistic. And it's like, so I don't know. I mean, <laughs> what, is this not a freedom of speech? I don't understand. Like, like you're acting like it's illegal to be an asshole. But no, he would just some other comic he tried to get canceled. And then it turns out that he's like a fucking weirdo, like a or some shit like he's like I don't know that might be libel um <laughs> he sucked something about the stand he would write stuff about the stand he was just constantly blogging you know just like uh, vendetta like just could not wait to like get people canceled and it's people like that who I just fucking detest like you have nothing better to do you have no uh, creative outlet your best creative outlet is trying to find others and just like fuck them over Nobody's perfect. Everybody made mistakes. Like, so I think that's why comics are like, you can't do that. Like you, like if somebody is undeniably funny and like truly like gifted when it comes to comedy, first of all, they're allowed to fuck up because it's art and people are allowed to make mistakes. I'm of the belief (laughs) that if it gets a laugh, it's fucking worth it. And that might be a little extreme. (laughs) And I understand people are going to be a little more like center than I am. But then this has been said a lot of times too. You have to defend the attempt. If your intention is to make others laugh with whatever the fuck you're saying, I'm going to defend the attempt. So I think that like for comics specifically, we just like like to see that the guy win who against like any like sort of like mob culture type of bullshit because that's the other thing it was such a pile on of Shane too just like people who had never heard him from like Adam and the first they're hearing of him is this clip that this guy is like exploiting and then they just take that clip and like this is what's wrong with comedy this isn't fucking funny this is fucking racist it's like could you uh, explore a little more of the guy's work maybe before you make this decision to like publicly damn him? Also, you, you're a fucking loser for publicly damning anyone. Like, go get a job. But that's what I think. My poop's coming out. Finally. Anybody else travel and they're like a poop behind? Mabel, you haven't even made an appearance on the goddamn podcast today because Nancy brought her a bone. Shout out to Chanel Ali for taking care of Mabel while I was away. Um, Please subscribe to her stuff. She's a great comic. Check her out when she's on the road. If she comes to your city, subscribe to her YouTube and her um, follow her on Instagram. She's fucking awesome. And then, yeah. And then, you know, I don't know. The Grammys? I love Miley Cyrus. For some reason, that live performance of Flowers like wasn't hitting for me. I don't know. I thought she looked amazing and I'm obsessed with all things Bob Mackie. Like he used to make all shares dresses and stuff. And I just, I would like to wear a Bob Mackie dress to film my special in. Can we make that happen? This is the clip. Dear Bob Mackie, my name is Karen Fian and I would like you to design me a very special dress for when I film my comedy special. That'd be sick, dude. Be off. Um, what do you think about Jay Z's speech? Did you hear? I didn't, but I also like. I'm surprised you didn't like Miley's performance because I thought you'd be like super into her because it was like know. very Ricky Gervais to me when she was like, "How yeah. are you guys acting like you don't know this yes, song?" Yes, I know. I like. I don't know why. It just. 
It wasn't, it wasn't, and I liked that song and I liked it when it first came out and she did look amazing. I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. It just felt a little, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm weird. It just wasn't giving enough it, for you. Yeah. She looked great though. I thought she looked great. That Taylor looked great. I like how Taylor used her award as a marketing ploy. She's such a fucking businesswoman. It's like unreal. Jay-Z, like he kind of like, I don't know. I wonder, I'm sure there are conversations like behind closed doors. I bet Beyonce is kind of like, yeah, why haven't I ever won album of the year? Cause that was in one part of his speech that I was kind of like, Ugh. I guess it's just like him and Kanye, like both of these times on these like platforms, like why do they need to speak for her? She's like maybe one of the most influential women on the planet. Like if she has something to say, I'm sure she can advocate for herself. I guess I just, I find it kind of insulting that these guys and, and what happens when they do. So he goes, she's won more Grammys than anybody, but she's never won album of the year. Like you remember when Kanye, like, like went up when Taylor, like got hers and like did that thing to her too. And it's just sort of like, so Beyonce can't escape that spotlight. Cause the camera's cut immediately to her and everybody's like waiting on her reaction. Like, what is she going to do? And she plays it stoic every time I've seen, I mean, maybe you guys disagree, but I just find it unnecessary. I thought he could have just accepted his award for his body of work and what he's done in his life without like taking a shot at the Grammys. I don't know. On behalf of his wife, who is like super powerful and probably could have, she has something to say. <laughs> I bet she could fucking say it herself. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm sure the incels will tell me that that's why I'm single. That's why you're single. You refuse to like someone you don't like. <laughs> oh, and my favorite, and I think this comment has a ton of likes, and I, I think I left it up for that reason. Future cat lady. <laughs> there is a 70 pound lab shepherd mix on the goddamn couch with me for the whole episode. And somebody writes, future cat lady. Yeah, how many, do you think a cat would survive in this fucking apartment? If by cat lady, you mean feed cats to my dog lady, maybe. It is funny that like some of these people, it, it's just like thinking this matters. What I say really matters mm -hmm. to be like, this guy said, this entire vid says so much about you <laughs> more than you realize. More than I, more than I realize. All right. It's like. <laughs> What does that mean? What are you supposed to do with that information? Like change your whole life? Right, right, right. And what is it? But what does it say about me? So this video where you describe um, a guy that you're not really hitting it off with for one and B, he's also like not paying for anything. That tells us that you what are a human being who reacts to things normally? <laughs> what? I'm normal. You guys are fucking weird. Well, I, I'm, I'm curious. How would you have done it differently? Oh, swoon, let me pay for more stuff. Like what? Like, oh my God, this is so great. You're, I don't know how one would have played it differently. It also is like, regardless, the bottom line is this is like an out of context moment from an episode right. where you are a comic and you're like laying something on. So it's right. like, yeah, we knew that people were going <laughs> to like have these kind of responses because it's it. like. Also, you really nailed like that must have really stuck with you. Reason you're alone, number 156. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you said the exact number. Like yeah. you just had it on. Oh, that, I was like, what are the other 155 reasons? This guy is a spreadsheet. She's acting all tough, but we know she gobbled, gobbled it down. It. That was, almost I feel like a girl wrote that. I think that was a female comment. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Some of them, a lot of them are like bots. And you got, if you go and click on their profile, it's like they're a seagull. And you're like, are you a man? Are you a woman? No, I'm a gull. <laughs> I'm a North American seagull. Oh, my poop's ready. How long have we been podcasting for? Not long enough, huh? No, but we can take an intermission if you want. No, because I'll never come back. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, I kind of live in the Florida of New York. I get to see boats in the ocean. It's interesting, that, like the homeless on Key West, they just like live on boats. Like they're not really homeless. What do you mean? Like, uh, 
That's what it is. Like, like the, the people who are like unhoused, it's not that they have unhoused. They just live on like a houseboat. It might be like a rinky dink shitty little houseboat that they just like hook up for like plumbing and electricity when they need it. And they'll like pay for the electricity. Key West is expensive though. Like to park your boat, I think somebody told me it was like a few grand a month or something just to park it there. All right, we're gonna take an intermission. I feel like that was only a minute or two. And I washed my hands. You coming to show me your bone? You so proud of mama? Come on, hey, hey. Mabel missed me because I was away, huh? I got your hair all over my face. Yeah, show them your bone. Say thank you to Nancy for my bone. <laughs> Our dog mom, Nancy, who is Leo's mom, goes to Canal Street and gets really good bones for the dogs. And they just love him so much, huh, Mabel? Yes, you love it so much. Yes, you do. I really would love to just move to Key West, bring Mabel, but she would fuck up all the fuck. She'd, she'd kill an iguana. The iguanas were fucking too, and th those are big. They would fly out of the trees into the pool. I guess not really flying. They would just fall like little fucking dinosaurs. All right, Mabes. Nicole doesn't want that gross bone. It's gross. Go chew it on your bed. You want to chew it up here? All right, lie down. Mabel, somebody made a little TikTok. And it's them watching the podcast with their dog. And he likes you. He's like, I looked at Mabel. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Oh, sorry. What was I talking about? How fast I pooped? Amazing. It does remind me of this one time I got a hydrocolonic. You ever gotten one of those, Nicole? No. It's where they shoot water up, warm water up your asshole and then they suck it out and they show you the machine they shoot it all into. Mine looked like a, like a miso soup. I think I had like kale the night before. And uh, I remember telling the lady, I was like, I'm really regular. Like I poop all the time poop in the morning, blah, blah. And she went, do they feel complete? And that really like blew my mind because I was like, I don't know. I don't know when it ends sometimes. Like who knows what's complete and what's not. That the hydrocolonic thing is great. Well, for me, it was pretty fam painful because I had a lot of trapped gas, but that's another story. She says it's like all the dairy and meat that I eat, but I refuse to stop my protein intake. So I don't give a fuck. In that room, there's like a toilet that you can see while she, she, like, she goes tiny little pinch and she puts a tiny needle up your butthole and then the water starts shooting up. You're disgusting. You're disgusting. And, uh, and all you can look at is the toilet across the room because you just want to like shit your brains out immediately, right? Because it just like feels like that suction stuff, but you can't. You got to like stick it out, stick it out until I finally, I was like, I'm tapping, I'm tapping. And then you go and you run and you like poop and then you think you're good and you sign out and you pay and then two blocks away from the place, you have to fucking shit again. So you got to run back up. Well, that's what happened to me. Can we reverse to put a tiny needle up your butthole? Yeah. Like what do you, what do you? Not a needle, but like a tiny little like thin tube that you really don't feel. And they just blast you? Yeah, and then they blast you with the water. When yep. do you start pooping normally again? Like I would say like a couple hours after. When like you don't feel like. poop the next morning feels like. A good one. Too. You're chilling. You're not like sh feeling like you're going to shit yourself for days. Yeah, that goes away after like that second when you run back and have to shit again, then it goes away. Now, where does one go to do this? Like, do you, do you go to a doctor? Is this like a spa they should thing? Be doctors. Like, they probably should be doctors if they're fucking around with your buttholes, huh? Right. Just blasting stuff into your butthole. <laughs> I don't think this bitch was a doctor at all. I think she was a hippy dippy telling me to eat kale instead of my, you know, full pig diet. <laughs> But how did you even find this? Like, where did you go? Um, I looked it up. I th who was it? it? Was probably my friend Amanda, who I follow, Raw Fitness Nutrition, constantly shouting her out. It was probably something I saw her do, and I was like, "Yeah, this sounds awesome. Let me reset my gut health." What are you gonna do, Mabes? You dropped your bone. <laughs> what are you gonna do? I'm not getting it. That thing's gross. I gotta fire up the Roomba. What's going on with you right here? This little patch right here. You want to go to the vet? Should we go to the vet? 
You want to go to the vet? I actually owe them a poop sample for you. I just feel bad asking anyone who's watching her to do any like duties like that. Like, can you drop her shit off at the vet? <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to collect your shit on this walk after this. What is the poop sample for? It's just like her annual checkup. Word. They just dig through it. I think they eat it. I don't know what they do. <laughs> I think they dig through it and like make a stamp and put it on the vet's wall. And they go, Mabel. Make a sculpture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they go, Mabel shit. Yeah, Mabel shit. Yes, I do. We had to get so many of those for Raspberry when we first got her because she had Giardia. Like yeah. off and on for a couple months. So we had to bring in many poop samples. The first we brought, they lost. So we had to bring in a new one. And then 50 more. I know this isn't really that interesting. No, it is. I'm listening. I'm sorry. I'm obsessed with dogs and Mabel. No, Mabel's never had Gerard. Mabel had Eklikia when I first got her, which is like similar to heartworm. It's worms, but it's not as bad as heartworm. But she was on medicine for 30 days. Hi, huh, Mabes. We're all better now, right? I don't know. I got to bring that shit sample. What up, Paul? I love you. I miss you so much. You're going to spend the weekend with Sonic. <laughs> I love Sonic. You do too. I love her so much. This was one of like the first like road gigs though that I wasn't like, I miss Mabel like every, you know, waking hour. I was like really kind of enjoying myself and I just... I don't know. I know that when she's with Chanel, she's like very well taken care of and like fine. I was wondering about that too. Like when you go away, if, if you do feel that way. Yeah. Because I saw this TikTok of a girl who was sobbing in Tulum because she like missed her dog. Like she yeah. was out at a bar in Tulum, literally crying. And she was like, I miss like whiskers or he yeah. had like a goofy name. I get it. And I was like, I do that too. Like yeah. we literally... I told you this on New Year's, ran home before the ball. Like we were out and ran home before the ball drop. She's like, she's going to be alone during the ball drop. Like she has no concept of time, None. but we felt so bad. No effect on her whatsoever. Yeah, <laughs> She can't be alone for the new year. Who is she going to kiss on when it's midnight? Like we don't. Yeah, we every time we're out, I think it's mostly me, but my boyfriend will too. Where We're like, we miss her. Yeah, I just like. You know, I have that thing in my head where, like, nobody loves her like her mom, and I know everything she wants to do, and I'll do whatever. To do. And, uh, yeah. But this, yeah, this trip, I was a little less, like, angsty about that. But I feel like when I'm in Austin, because I'm only home for two days with her, that I'm going to be like, I want my fucking dog. Because it's more than just, like, mm, I love, it's, like, your routine, it's weird when you're doing like road gigs or on vacation because you have no schedule to adhere to. Like you're like, oh, I could just go to this after I do this. I don't have to run home and walk my dog before. It's weird. I miss the structure of a dog. Yeah. What do you do in times like this where you said you have two days in between trips? How Like what do you even do? How do you do you just immediately dive back into routine or can you not do that in two days? Luckily, uh, I was able to, like I, I took the Tuesday morning workout class that I typically take when I'm, you know, like having a good week. Um, I'm having a little issue right now with my laundry <laughs> because I went to do a bunch of laundry before I left but they shut my laundry room down. So when I went to go get my clothes out of the dryer, I couldn't. I don't know. I don't know what my building has done with my clothing. So that's part of the routine. So like, like, that's my thing. Like, I'm like, I have to just make my home and everything clean again because somebody's going to be here for the Mabes. But yeah, me and Mabel jump. We did our Frisbee this morning. We'll do Frisbee tomorrow, too, even though I have a 1030 spot tonight at the stand. Um, as long as I figure out how to do some sort of vigorous workout while I'm on the road. I'm okay. It's just when I like miss that somehow I can't, I don't have energy. I'm unhappy. I'm like snappy. So I got to figure that out. Joe just rented a house and I'm going to wake him up doing fucking burpees. If I can't find some weights to lift, I need to work on my form. Hopefully my personal trainer can actually meet with me tomorrow. Or do I want to go to Lifetime and go to Mary's butt class? 
Uh, wasn't there potential of him getting a new job or something? Yeah, he got it. He's leaving. When? Like a month. What does this mean? Terrible. I told him I'm really upset. And I was like, you got to wreck. I was like, so are you even going to recommend me a new trainer? I was like, are you going to come and introduce them and work out for us for an hour and show them what we do? He was like, no. <laughs> like, all right. Maybe it's time for me to stop paying that extra $400 a month for a trainer. Maybe it's time for me to start spending that somewhere else. So if you can think about it, it's like I, I'm spending $600 a month on my fitness. That's crazy. Yeah, but it is like a huge priority to you and a big part of your life. So I feel like, I don't know, I can make excuses for anything. Yeah, it is a huge priority. And it's a good thing. It's not like, I don't know, takeout or like what I spend my money on. Like spending it on fitness. Love for like spend great. $600 a day on takeout. <laughs> and they're going to have to take out his organs. <laughs> Sorry, Lev. He loves the shout out. He'll search his name. He'll find it. <laughs> this little part. Oh. Yeah, the episode of you guys watching his uh, yeah. documentary was so funny. <laughs> it was just like so absurd. He was like a really good sport about it, but all of you together were just like a menace. Uh, we were so bad. Well, that's when Cannon made me take a hundred milligram edible. Asshole. He, I don't know if he knows how easy I am to peer pressure into doing practically anything. And I just wanted to like big time Brendan. Because I walked in and Brendan's like, I took a 50. And I look at Mike. I was like, what'd you do? He's like, 100. He's like, I was like, maybe I'll just do 50. He's like, nah, I'll do 100. I was like, all right. Passed out. I couldn't feel my legs that night. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's the closest anyone, like, in this age will see you to be, like, being drunk. Yeah. Because your eyes were, like, sealed shut. Like, you weren't <laughs> speaking English at the end. It was so funny. What is, like, the amount you would normally take that you're, like, comfortable with? Probably like a 25, a 30, dude. So you're like, Wait, fuck I don't remember my eyes being shut at the end. I believe you. Should I reference the video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull up. Yeah, they're like sealed shut and you're like, you, you're like slurring your words, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I couldn't even. I, I think I know what part you're talking about, like towards like the very end, but like I was donezo. I mean. Yeah. Eyes are not open. <laughs> Eyes are not open. Barely hanging on. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. What a great little plug the lab just got for his fucking show. Hummy bull. Hummy bull. Yes, you did. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know how many more frantic shows I have in me, to be honest, with all of this travel. You know, this is probably an email I should be sending to Patrick and Joe and Aaron. Um, but uh, I'm just like, I guess I'll let you guys on <laughs> it. I mean, I want to keep doing Frantic. It's just uh, uh, the timing and the travel and the start time and the length of the show um, is just sort of starting to be not really conducive to me. And I'm like, you know, I hate bailing. I'd rather just kind of let people know I'm not going to be there. So I'm not just like a cancel, constant cancel queen. Lansing, Michigan, March 1st. It's called Gray Wall. Look out for that, guys. And then there, uh, I'm doing like um, Lafayette too. And I think I have a February 28th gig in Denver or in Fort Collins. But that shit's, uh, I gotta fucking email that guy. Fuck. Great job plugging, Karen, you idiot. Just subscribe, to guys. You know I post all my shit. Just stay tuned, okay? Goodbye. Throwing ass on the gram, getting laughs at this time Only she can, only feed hands It's only Only It's only feed hands